हेलो फ्रेंड्स माय नेम इज ललित सोनी एंड आई वेलकम यू ऑल इन दिस न्यू एपिसोड ऑफ न्यूज ऑन मैप इंडिया सेगमेंट इन दिस एपिसोड वील बी टॉकिंग अबाउट सर्टेन लोकेशन विच हैज बीन इन न्यूज फ्रॉम इंडिया एंड दीज लोकेशन कैन बी इम्पोर्टेंट फॉर योर एग्जाम पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू Now we will be taking certain MCQs based on these locations in India, and then we'll try to solve it. Okay, so that you can remember these in the MCQ formats, uh, it will be easy for you to uh, you know pictureize them. So let's start with the practice question which was given to you in the previous class. Okay, so the question was consider the following statement about Majuli masks. Okay, it belongs to the state of Assam. Then Majuli mask or Majuli mukha shilpa traces its origin to Sri Man Sankar Deva who used Art as a medium of bhakti. Choose the correct options. You have to choose the correct options. Now, when we are talking about this Majuli mask, recently it has been granted a GI tag. Okay, along with the Majuli paintings. Okay, so this GI tag has been given. You know that GI tag makes that particular product very much important in that area because it attached a geographical origin with it and to the, the you can say to its specific characteristics, it add value to it. Okay, so that is why Majuli mask has been in use now. This GI tag was given in Assam, okay. And Mazuli Mukha Shilpa traces its origin to Sriman Shankar Deva. Shankar Deva was, or you can say, a reformer. He was from a neo Vaishnavite sect, okay. During the Bhakti movement, there was various changes which were, uh, you know, going on at that point of time. And the devotion or the means to moksha was con considered as Bhakti, okay. So basically, uh, due to that particular bhakti uh, movement, this particular sect came that was neo Vaishnavite, and in Assam, uh, uh, reformer was Saint Sankara Deva, Saint Srimant Shankara Deva. Okay, and he has uh, done various things over there, so we will be talking about that in some other video. But the thing is, that is why Mazuli mask has been in news. Okay, and these two statements are correct, so option C would be your right answer. Let's see, this is from Assam. Okay. Mazuli masks. Other than that, you know that there is this Mazuli island as well. I want you to tell me in the comment section where this Mazuli island is and why it is famous. Okay, we have discussed about it, so that is why I'm asking you. Now moving further, here you can see in this picture there are certain Mazuli mukhas. Okay, so here this is for Ravan, this is for uh, Shuparnaka. Then you have this uh, uh, Garur, you can say, or you can uh, uh, relate it from. Uh, uh, that uh, particular character in Ramayana, okay. Then we have Hanuman, then Varha, we also uh, uh, make such marks in the form of Varha, okay. So, about Majuli marks, here you can see these are handmade marks traditionally used to depict characters in Bhavanas. So, basically, Bhavanas are nothing but a theater, theatrical play. Okay, so when we are talking about this particular sect which has been innovated by uh, uh, Sriman Sankara Deva, reformer Sriman Sankara Deva in 15th to 16th century. So what happened? They have come up with few ideas and they have established Satras. Satras are nothing but monasteries or you can say monastic institutions. Okay. These satras were maintained as a monastic institutions and wherein they perform certain things like uh, they used to sing this song that is Borgi. Okay, that, that was a song which is uh, dedicated to this particular sect. And then they had this Shatriya, Shatriyas, this was a dance performed by this particular sect. Okay, and then they have Bhavnas. Okay. Along sometimes along with bhavanas, they used to sing this Borgit as well. Okay, these bhavanas are basically theaters, okay, or drama, you can say. Okay, so that is why while performing these bhavanas, they used to use this mask. The mask can depict god, goddesses, demon, animals, birds, etc. Like example, Ravan, Garuda, Narsimha, Hanuman, Varaha, Suparnakha, all these are features in this form of mask. Okay, so here you can say that both the statements are correct. Option C would be your right answer. Now moving to the first question of the day, that is Netravati Riverfront project which was recently in news located in which of the following state, okay, options are Karnataka, Maharashtra, Uttarakhand or Assam, okay. So when we are talking about Netravati Riverfront, so this project uh, is 
uh, like a project wherein they are going for the riverfront development. What is riverfront development? It means that they are trying to make it more attractive, the riverfront or alongside of the river. They are trying to, let's say this is the river passing through one particular area. So, they are trying to or ornamentalize these particular areas. Okay. They are trying to make sure these areas are becoming tourist attraction. Okay. Wherein they are going for various parks or walking lanes, cycling lanes. So, all these things are they are trying to build so that tourism, uh, tourism can be boosted in that particular area as well. Okay. So, they are trying to make it more attractive, ornamentative. Okay. So, this is your riverfront development project. When we are talking about Netravati, here you can see this is the Netravati project. Recently, it was in news because the National Green Tribunal has said that this project has some kind of environmental laws violations or you can say uh, coastal, uh, coastal region or coastal zones we have. Okay. So, coastal regulation zones. I would want you to go through the different kind of coastal regulation zones so that you can know what kind of restrictions are there. Okay. So, uh, uh, here it is said that National Green Tribunal said that these particular project had some kind of violations which are related to your coastal regulation zones and environmental norms. And that is why this was in news and so we have taken and this particular project here is in Karnataka. Here you can see this is Net Karnataka and this is Netravati Riverfront. Other than that also there are various riverfront projects which has been developed in India which are being developed in India. India. So, you can go through these particular uh, projects like there is Yamuna, there is Jhelum and Tavi river. Then here you can say there is the Musa riverfront project in Odisha and we have Musi riverfront project in uh, Telangana. You know that this uh, Musi river used to be quite famous because Hyderabad was established on the banks of Musi river but now it is ki quite, uh, kind of polluted. So that, that is why it has been in news. So, these certain things you can go through. Now, Coming to the question, option A would be your right answer, that is Karnataka. Okay. Now, moving further, question number 2. Consider the following statement. The Manas River is transboundary in the Himalayan foothill between southern Bhutan and India, which we will see. Now, Chumbi Valley in Himalayas project southward from Tibetan Plateau intervening between Sikkim and Bhutan. Okay. So, they are asking, this is between Sikkim and Bhutan. Second, they are saying that this is in the southern Bhutan and India. Okay. That is about Manas River. And then, Chumbi Valley is connected to the Sikkim, uh, to the southwest via Nathula Pass. Okay. So, let's come to the map and let's see. So, here you can see this is the map of Brahmaputra. Here this is river Brahmaputra and Manas is basically a tributary of Brahmaputra. Okay. So, tell me from where Manas river originates. Okay. And now here you can see that it is entering Assam from Bhutan. Okay. So, you can say that it is entering from Bhutan to Assam, okay, from the southern Bhutan, that is fine, okay. So, here first statement, Manas River is transboundary in Himalayan foothills between southern Bhutan and India. We have seen that it is from the southern Bhutan and India, okay. Then coming to the next part, here they are talking about Chumbi Valley. Chumbi Valley here you can see this is the area, okay. This is Sikkim and this is basically, uh, you know, uh, Bhutan, okay, here. So, this is the area which is... Uh, having Sikkim and Bhutan on the boundary. Okay. Chumbi Valley is quite important strategically as well because this is in the vicinity of China. When we have talked about this Doklam issues in 2017, okay. So, these areas, Doklam, this Chumbi Valley or Dong Lang region, all these areas are in the vicinity and that is why they become strategic for Bhutan as well as India because if China get to access these points, so, we have Siliguri corridor here, which is quite near to these points, okay. Now, Siliguri, Siliguri corridor is particular corridor which is connecting the uh, Indian territory or you can say uh, the northern side of the Indian territory with the northeastern states, okay. We know that here we have the seven sisters this side, okay. So, this is the only area which is having a land connectivity from our own land, okay. So, that is why if we, uh, you know, uh, lose access to this particular area or the Siliguri corridor that would be very detrimental for India's interest because then 
we would not have any land boundary or you can say direct land access to north eastern region and that is why india is going for various projects from bangladesh or from the uh, you know myanmar etc uh, we are trying to connect this north eastern region of india to our mainland okay now when we are talking about this uh, particular area of chumbi valley and uh, here this sikkim you can see there is this pass this pass is basically nathula pass okay so that is important for us now coming to the question manas river is the transboundary river in himalayas foothill southern bhutan and india this is correct then chumbi valley in the himalayas project south southward from the tibetan plateau uh, intervening between sikkim and bhutan which we have already seen so this is also correct then chumbi valley is connected with the uh, uh, connected to sikkim to the southwest via mountain pass that is nathula so that is also correct here you can see this is your chumbi valley sorry so here you can say this is southwest of chumbi valley and this is your nathula pass okay which is connecting it from the sikkim okay so this statement is also correct so the question is asking you uh, which of the following statements are correct so we can say all of the above c would be your right answer okay now moving further question number 3 consider the following statements about amrabad tiger reserve so it is located on in the state of telangana okay then second statement major rivers like uh, sorry major reservoirs like sri selam dam and nagarjuna sagar dam are fed by the river krishna and its several perennial streams that originate in the tiger reserve so basically here they are talking about the origin of these perennial streams and not the krishna river the origin of krishna river is somewhere in, in mahabaleswar okay so tell me where mahabaleswar is in india which state uh, you can say mahabaleswar is located in okay so here when we are talking about krishna the origin is mahabaleswar okay but here they are talking about this perennial streams okay so uh, the statement one in the state of telangana so let's see before that amrabad was in news because recently there are forest fires okay these forest fires are started already because generally the month of uh, uh, june or you can say may and june is the time wherein these forest fires are at peak april may june okay because of the summer and the dry uh, you can say uh, climate over at that point of time and that is why forest fires are happening at uh, should be happening at april may or around june okay but the thing is right now we are facing these forest fires in the month of march itself okay so that can be an effect of climate change okay and extreme uh, weather events which are happening so that is why these forest uh, fires are happening in the uh this amrabad tiger reserve okay and there are speculations in tamil nadu we will see more forest fires okay now coming to the location of it so it is in telangana here you can see this is uh, india and here we have this telangana and here in the telangana we have this amrabad tiger reserve in the you can say in the southern part of it okay so that is about your amrabad location now uh here if you can see it is uh you know this is hyderabad the big, uh, in telangana and then here you can see in the southern part in the southwards we have this amrabad tiger reserve and there are various streams okay these are strong uh, small, small streams these are having this origin in amrabad and they are you know kind of part of krishna river basin okay so here you can see this statement is correct then major reservoirs like sri selam dam and the nagarjuna sagar are fed by the river krishna and it's several perennial streams that originate in the tiger reserve okay so both of them are correct so option c would be your right answer okay now question number 4 consider the following statement about povitora wildlife sanctuary it is situated in the state of arunachal pradesh second is it has highest density of one horned rhino in the world and it is often called mini kaziranga due to similar landscape and vegetations okay how many of the above statements are correct you have to choose the correct statements okay now when we are talking about this povitora povitora was in news because recently the government over there or you can say if i tell you the government of assam so obviously that gives you an idea that it is in assam government of assam has denotified this particular area from being a wildlife sanctuary okay so earlier it was uh, there was this notification which has uh, 
given it the status of wildlife sanctuary but assam government is saying that uh, uh, notification at the time of this notification uh, certain permissions was not taken okay and because of this particular not notification the locals which, which were living in that particular area they have been displaced from that particular uh, site of the uh, this uh, wildlife sanctuary and that is why they have denotified it okay but supreme court has stated the order okay supreme court has stated this particular order okay now statement one is incorrect because it is in assam and not in anasal pradesh and that is why it was in news it has the highest density of bird horn rhino in the world okay so i would say that this statement is correct okay then it is often called mini kaziranga this is called mini kaziranga because first of all they have the highest density okay here now i'm not talking about the number we are talking about the density okay second thing is it is called mini kaziranga because they have the similar vegetation and the landscape okay so kaziranga is famous for your one horned rhinoceros okay and since their uh, vegetation and landscape are same and they also host the population or highest density of this particular population of rhinos and that is why it is called mini kaziranga okay now coming to the map first i told you this is in assam okay so pobitora wildlife sanctuary it is in assam and uh, kaziranga it is in the vicinity so kaziranga when we are talking about kaziranga is on the southern part of brahmaputra river okay and here this is the area wherein you will find this is one horned rhinoceros okay so uh, that is why it was in news so you can say that this statement was incorrect because it was in assam other two statements are correct option b would be your right answer okay now moving further question number Fifth, consider the following statement about Great Indian Bustard. Okay, so Great Indian Bustard or GIB, it was in news because because of the uh, you know overhead uh, power lines they are being dying. Okay, so that is why it was in news and Supreme Court has made a panel uh, to make sure that how can we get out of this particular problem. Okay, now consider the following statement: the largest concentration of the Great Indian Bustard, perhaps 120 birds, occurs in the state of Gujarat. Okay. So that is one statement. Second statement, it was classified as a critically endangered by the International Union for Conservation and of Nature, that is IUCN, in 2011. The biggest threat to this bird is the overhead power lines that uh, uh, as the GIB uh, frequency frequently collide with them and get killed. Okay, you have to choose the correct statement. This I already told because it was in news. Okay, second, when we are talking about it is uh, critically endangered. Yes, it is critically endangered and it was uh, given this status in 2011 by the IUCN. So, this statement is also correct and it is factual. So, I have to, told you. Now, largest concentration. When we are talking about the largest concentration of this bird, it is not in Gujarat, but it is in Rajasthan. Rajasthan, we have a uh, desert national park where we found this particular uh, population in a very, uh, you know, high concentration. So, here, here, that you can say this was in news because of this particular reason and here they have said that it is critically endangered by IUCN in 2011 okay and biggest threat to these birds are overhead power lines as GIB frequently collide with them and get killed okay so that was the news and now here you can see this these are the areas okay like Rajasthan Gujarat and Madhya Pradesh then we have Maharashtra and Karnataka and uh, Andhra Pradesh we have small number of population of uh, these uh, you know bustards over there but when we are talking about the maximum number, maximum number is found in Rajasthan here, okay. And it is one of the bird, it is one of the bird which are having a large uh, mass, then uh, large weight, still they can fly, okay. So, uh, you can say that from even being a largest bird, it can fly, okay. So, highest population is in Rajasthan, okay. So, now coming to the question here, this statement was incorrect because it is in Rajasthan and not Gujarat, okay. Now, these two statements were correct, so option B would be your right answer. Question number six. Kokrajar Gelepu rail link was in news recently. It connects India Myanmar, India Bangladesh, India Nepal, India Bhutan. Okay. So if you have any idea about the current affairs, you must have heard that recently our PM Mr. Modi visited Bhutan. Despite being election in the country, he has visited Bhutan and he has got the highest order of uh, uh, that country okay so he has been awarded with the highest order of uh, uh, bhutan so i would want you to name that particular award or name of the award in the comment section okay so 
that is why Bhutan and India relations were in news and in that particular visit they have also talked about this Kokrajhar Gelapur rail link okay it was in news for a while okay earlier they have been uh, there was this proposal for this uh, rail link now we are going for it okay so option D would be a right answer that is India and Bhutan here you can see Assam to Bhutan okay Kokrajhar is in Assam and to Bhutan we will have a rail link okay because you know that uh, Bhutan's economy is based on tourism and most of them are coming from India and China. So, that is why to even boost that particular, uh, you know, you can say tourism, other than that also you can boost trade, connectivity, all these things with Bhutan, okay. And Bhutan has been a all-weather friend. We have a treaty of friendship with Bhutan and uh, uh, since as I told you, a PM has visited during election time there, so you can understand the significance of that particular country for us, okay. Now, question again, answer is D, Bhutan. Question number 7, in which state the Medaram Jatra, okay, Medaram Jatra, uh, the largest tribal religious congregation in the world, primarily celebrated by Koya tribe. So, they are saying that it is celebrated by Koya tribe. And it is a tribal religious congregation, largest tribal religious congregation. That is why it becomes important. I can say that after Kumb, okay, this is the largest religious congregation, okay. So, that is why please remember this particular tribe and the, uh, you know, what is the reason behind it. Now, this Medaram Jatra is basically, uh, you know, uh, to commemorate the, uh, you can say a revolt which has happened in 12th century, okay, a uh, revolt which has happened in 12th century, okay, so there was this mother-daughter duo, they have uh, gone for a revolt against Kakteya rulers, Kakteya you must have heard about them, okay, so they have gone against the Kakteya rulers at that point of time, okay, to commemorate that particular event, they are going for this Jatra, okay, so name of this mother-daughter duo was Tamaka, and Saralama. Okay, so this is an example of woman empowerment. There are high chances they might even ask you uh, in prelims sometimes because such names, such uh, you know personalities or women uh, in specific, they have asked in uh, past, so they might ask you in the future as well. Okay, so now this particular event uh, takes place in Telangana. Okay. So, here you can see this is Telangana where Koya tribe is found and they are celebrating this particular event. Here you can see uh, this is the picture of uh, this Medaram Jatra and here you can see this is Koya tribe uh, while celebrating this particular event. Okay. So, now coming to the last part that is your practice question uh, that is answer is A. Now, the practice question is regarding the national Chambal sanctuary consider the following statement. It is spanned across the state of Uttar Pradesh. Madhya Pradesh and Rajasthan. The sanctuary located along the Chambal River is one of the very few critical habitats for two endangered crocodile species that is Gharial and the Magar crocodile. Then third statement is Chambal River also hosts the endangered Gangetic River Dolphin. How many of the given statements are incorrect or you can say not correct. So, you have to choose the incorrect statements. Okay. So, I hope you will read this question and answer in the comment box. Okay. So, with that, I would like to wrap up the session. If you have not subscribed the channel, please subscribe the channel. Thank you. For more informative content, like, share and subscribe. And do not forget to press the bell icon to get the notifications.